It's all been building to this, folks. The last stop on my 2022 Yunnan tour in the number one ranked town in my Chinese ancient town rankings. This is Lijiang Ancient City. <laughs> Back in an ancient city again. It feels good. I just love this massive maze of streets and little alleys. And turning down each one, you never know what kind of blend of old and new you're gonna find. Lijiang Ancient City is located in the city of Lijiang in northwest Yunnan province. Lijiang is the ancient city in China. I've done a lot of research on Chinese ancient towns and compiled together a list of the best ones. Lijiang tops that list. One thing you may have noticed about Lijiang, a lot of the buildings are really well preserved. It's one of four completely preserved ancient cities in China. As a result, it is only one of two ancient cities in China that have been declared cultural world heritage sites. The history and beauty of the city goes way beyond the actual Old Town scenic area known as Dayan Old Town. Shuha ancient town where I just came from is actually part of Lijiang ancient city, as well as a numerous other sites including Hei Long Tan or Black Dragon Pool. I'd like to imagine that the welcome mat to heaven looks something like this. A glistening body of water reflecting picturesque Chinese architecture and the serene Yulong snow mountain in the background. Since its construction in 1737, this place has been an important source of water and religious site in Lijiang. But there's a bit more history hiding at the bottom of this pool. As the story goes, there were 10 evil dragons that were just wrecking up the place. And then along came a famous Chinese immortal, Lu Dongbin. He defeated the dragons, and nine of them were jailed in the tower. The youngest black dragon was let free as long as he would protect the people. That youngest dragon is living at the bottom of the pool today. I don't want to mess with any black dragon. Anyway, it was about time to get back and really start exploring the old town. So in the middle of the street in all these shops is this old drinking well. It said that Kublai Khan. Kublai. Kublai Khan. Kublai. Kublai Khan. Kublai Khan and his troops drank from this well in 1253. And I just saw a why my dude, like a delivery dude, go up and casually drink the water. So I guess you can still drink the water today. When you come to Lijian Ancient City, it would be an absolute travesty if you do not climb to the top of the Wangu Tower here at Shan Park. Here, during the sunrise, you can get the best view of the ancient city. And it's only now when I realize actually how huge this ancient city is. Looking down at the buildings, it's difficult to distinguish between the actual Lijiang modern city and the ancient city of Lijiang. But I still haven't gotten a close look at the political center of Lijiang. Beijing has the Forbidden City, and Lijiang has Mufu. The Mus were the family in charge of Lijiang, and this was their home. Lijiang is the only ancient city in China without a city wall, in order to prevent the Mus from being trapped. There's a funny story for that. The family here, the character Mu, if you put a box around it, it becomes Kun, which means trap. I haven't been to the Forbidden City yet, but compared to the old mansions I visited in other ancient towns, Mufu is different. Not only in its scale, but every detail of the place is so ornate, it's like one huge architectural piece of art. The ancient Mus who lived here are long gone. But can you imagine being alive to see your childhood home turn into a museum? That's something Alio got to experience. This house was built in 1875. This is the Qing Dynasty, 1875. This is the Qing Dynasty, 1875. 
，但是这样子嘛，电话到今天都是那个对他非常有那个亲切，舍不得离开他，我就留下来守住这个老房子，并且做了一个博物馆。Museum， 我就学习了那个美国英语。Standard American English。There are n d this voice from America. Oh wow, it's really good. Really good. It's no wonder why Alio decided to stay here. Li Jiang is truly a relaxing getaway, and you can definitely find very peaceful, seemingly untouched parts of the town. But in the past few decades, Li Jiang has transformed from this to this. I'm currently standing in one of the wackiest restaurants I've ever seen. Along with the Chinese lanterns, there are horse and classical European statues all over the place. Not to mention pots of flowers covering almost every other inch of space. The bubble machine also adds a nice touch. You know how Disney has some parts of the park that look like different countries? Li Jiang is basically the more authentic version of the China exhibit at Disneyland. When you visit, you're gonna face big crowds. Modernized facilities and a lot of touristy shops across town. Is Li Jiang overcommercialized, and does that detract from the visitor experience? Since arriving here, I've learned that Li Jiang ancient city was built not for political reasons, not for the nearby water source. The primary reason this place was created was for exchanging goods, and soon after, it became one of the most, if not the most, important stop along the Tea Horse Trail. Realizing this, I think it's beautifully fitting to know that commercialization has always lived in the roots of Li Jiang, and it's. It's just evolved over time. Li Jiang is a place I've been wanting to visit for a while now, and finally arriving here after the end of a very long trip seems like a dream. Looking back on my time there, I'm still not sure if that place was real. It has this combination of lavishness and tranquility that makes you just want to find a cozy corner and take a really long nap. Feel free to doze off for three, four. Five hours. Heck, why don't you sleep in the whole day? It doesn't matter because the beauty of Li Jiang never turns off. Whenever you do wake up, this amusement park will be just as heavenly as when you left it. Well, folks, my 2022 Yunnan tour is coming to a close. Thanks for coming along the ride with me. But make sure to stay tuned because I've got plenty of more surprises in store for you. I'll see y'all for the next great China adventure. adventure.